Hello and welcome to Battle Report number 14 for the channel. This game will be a Kings of War Battle Report, 1500 points, forces of nature versus dwarves, with the scenario of loot. The dwarf army is as follows, Shieldbreaker Horde, Brew of Sharpness, Bulwarker Regiment, Brew of Courage, Earth Elemental Horde, Blessing of the Gods, Ranger Troop, Greater Earth Elemental, Steel Behemoth, Army Standard Bearer, uh, times two, one with a boomstick and one with a healing charm, a stone priest with bane chant upgrade, and the brew of haste item. Forces of nature list is as follows: uh, one salamander horde with the brew of strength, uh, one salamander horde with nothing, one earth elemental horde, two beasts of war, one with the lightning upgrade and one with vicious, a unicorn with the inspiring amulet, a tree herder, tree herder, a druid with a bane chant upgrade. So here is my opponent's deployment uh, it's the army you're probably familiar seeing me play against it's the person i play the most often from left to right is the uh lightning upgraded um beast of war next to him is the vicious upgraded beast of war which i will now refer to as the stegodon and carnosaur uh the shown uh, horde of earth uh salamanders here it's just the regular horde the next horde of salamanders is the upgraded strength horde uh tree herder as you would expect and a um, horde of earth elementals for the door side we have the uh, tank or steel behemoth uh, behind him is the healing charmed army standard bear you can see his banner hanging out there we have a regiment of bulwarkers who are slowly being painted up uh, an army standard bear between or next to them with the boom stick uh, horde of shield breakers greater earth elemental Behind the Greater Earth Elemental is the uh, Stone Priest hiding out, and then we have the Horde of Earth Elementals. And since this was taken after Vanguard, you see my Rangers Vanguarded up. So, uh, here's the deployment. Before we get started, just an overview. You can see where the tokens have been placed. Um, neither of us are substantially fast, so it's not surprising. We just kind of put them in the middle. Turn 1. Turn 1 goes to Dwarves, and if it's loot, I always go first, because I am slow. So the right side we move up and on the left side we move up here's an overview uh, shooting was ineffectual so we jump right into nature turn one on the right side he moves up on the left side he moves up <coughs> um, the stegodon does its laser shot or lightning bolt puts a damage on these guys and that's it so we move on to turn two turn two uh, the dwarves move up on the left Pretty much as fast as they can go for shambling guys. <clears throat> on the right, the dwarves move up a little more mildly. I know I'm not getting to those tokens first. So I might as well try to get him in a position um, where I can flank him. So what I've given him is he can charge with the uh, right salamander horde. He can charge either my horde of shield breakers, which he probably won't kill. Or he can charge my bull workers, which he might kill. So either way, if he charges one of those, he's either going to give a flank or just be substantially out of position um, or if he goes to take the token with that one I'll be in good shape to go uh, slam into the flank of him for what he'll have to do to grab it uh, yeah so shooting uh, put the rangers do their ranger thing put a point of damage and that's it here's the overview nature turn two the earth elementals go charging into the tank um, the strength boasted well, the right the right uh, salamander horde just backs up a little bit i'm um, not looking to commit the um salamander horde on the left jumps onto the token and it's on the wall so that's why they're kind of sitting like that and on the way left the um, stegodon the unicorn and the carnosaur triple charge my uh my earth elementals um, in doing so, the Carnosaur picks up the token because he lands on it. So here's the uh, the outcome of that. They do about six points of damage and pop off. Nothing too big. Uh, over here, the Earth Elementals do about three points of damage. Nothing too big. But my opponent successfully rolls double sixes and wavers my tank. So that's an overview of after that. We're just kind of dancing around. A little bit of damage. We move on to turn three. Turn three, my Dank fails his headstrong roll, so he's going to sit still. Uh, the bull workers move up. Um, 
the army standard bearer moves over like this uh, to get a pot shot off with his lightning bolt. Nothing big. Uh, he do 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 do. Oh, um, so over here, um, currently, what's what's happened is the earth elementals have charged the what is that called? The unicorn in between the two uh, the beasts of war there, and the um, greater earth elemental has moved up and pivoted, <clears throat> facing the uh, carnosaur's flank, and the. Uh, shield breakers have charged the um, salamander horde there. Uh, a little bit of healing goes off. <clears throat> a little bit of shooting goes off. And what this is showing is the um, greater earth elemental was surged into the flank of the carnosaur. Um, they don't fit together very well. I mean, you can see these models are, are quite over their bases, especially that earth elemental. His arms are huge. But I guess he was designed for 75-75. But anyway. So, uh, the Earth Elemental. Great Earth Elemental on the flank. Does okay work. Gets 7 damage on that there Carnosaur. Which is pretty good. Uh, the Earth Elementals themselves do pretty terrible. And put 2 points of damage on uh, the Unicorn. I mean, the Unicorn is defense 5. So, it's, it's a pretty, pretty hefty character. And that's... Oh, that was almost that. And then I was like, oh wait, we have another fight to do. And uh, the um, Shield Breakers do 12 points of damage to this Horde. So then that's it. Okay. Now we move on to nature turn three. Um, this is my opponent just putting its earth elementals back in. Um, you're going to see a lot of this. Uh, the right salamanders charge onto the bull workers. The left salamanders charge the greater earth elemental. And the carnosaur backs up his maximum. The uh, unicorn there moves back and around back behind the stegodon and the stegodon charges back into the earth elementals um, a little bit of healing goes off on these guys nothing spectacular um and damage on the tank nothing special uh the bull workers get eaten alive they're routed and they reform like this afterwards um oops. Um, the Greater Earth Elemental, though, only takes 9 points of damage, which is pretty lucky. Um, he should have been toast, but he made it out alive. Uh, these guys just take a few points of damage themselves for their trouble. So, move on to turn 4. Um, so far, my opponent has 2 tokens, and I have... One, no, my opponent has all 3. Yes. <clears throat> so, um, my turn, the tank is back to life and he goes slamming into those earth elementals the shield breakers and greater earth elemental double charge the uh, salamander horde i think the uh, greater earth elemental was yeah he was pivoted and then surged to make that move um the earth elementals go into the stegodon and you can see here the rangers go into the unicorn so that's pretty good Healbot does healbot duties. Um, the stone priest gets a bane chan off, which is pretty good. Um, but in the end, you know, it's not, they do okay. A few points of damage bounce off. Um, the shield breakers and earth elemental, greater earth elemental, go to work and just waste these guys. Reforming like this, and I give the greater earth elemental the token since he is in the least amount of current danger. The uh, tank does a bit of work here, you know, as is. So, uh, just an overview there. You can see um, my opponent has two tokens, and I have one now. Um, so this is actually my opponent's turn. It just says dwarf turn four. So a little bit of healing onto the stegodon to help the carnosaur get away. You can see the carnosaur has done a full pivot for his move this turn. Um, there we go. Uh, the uh, Salamander Horde charges the uh, Army Standard Bearer that I put in between um, the Salamander Horde and my Shield Breaker Horde just to uh, sack himself because points don't matter. Um, and you can see there, just barely in front of my Greater Earth Elemental, a Druid has parked himself um, to block line of sight or block um, being able to you know, get surged really luckily into that Carnosaur's rear. Quick overview of that. 
Um, damage, you know, these guys do a point or two of damage against the Titan, nothing special. Not surprising, the uh, Army Standard Bearer is pretty easily routed. Uh, he, he decides not to overrun, um, just sets himself like this. I think his idea was maybe he'd make me climb the fence first. So his counter charge would be, uh, would be more productive. So just an overview of that. Uh, tree herder running away and carnosaur running away. Dwarves turn five. Uh, the rangers go back into the uh, guy. The earth elementals go back into his guy. The greater earth elemental goes into the blocking druid. The shield breakers go smashing into that salamander horde. And uh, this the tank goes back into his target. Not for any real reason anymore, but what else are you going to do? Um, the greater earth elemental doesn't do that great, but he does waver his guy. Uh, the earth elementals, though, don't do much. Like a damage or two, it's nothing big. Uh, but the rangers, though, finally do their job after completely whiffing last, last time. Um, kill their unicorn and thankfully reform like this. So you might look at this and be like, oh, that's a weird way to reform. But you have to see that Carnosaur is about to move 14 inches away. Um, there's no way I'm going to be able to catch him. The only thing I'm going to be able to do is shoot him. So my rangers have positioned themselves so that he can march away, but he's going to get shot at at least once. The um, shield breakers on this side go to town. Like, it was, it was, it was really gross. Uh, my dice were just kind of on fire in this game. When it came to, uh, in the next game too, when it came to some of these things, like I just, I just rolled out of the box. Like they're hitting on fours, wounding on threes, but I ended up rolling something like 15, 15 damage, like just, just outrageous. Um, the tank also does okay, routes his guy and chugs forward in a vain, a vain attempt to catch the tree herder. Um, the bottom of, here's the overview after dwarf's turn. So nature, um, you can see the carnosaur has moved his maximum distance away. Uh, you can see the tree herder just at the top there. He has moved his maximum distance away. And the stegodon is just piled back into the um, earth elementals because he's got nothing else to do. Yep. There's that. And that's about that. Nothing really come of it. So um, dwarf turn six. You can see the the uh, the <laughs> the only thing of consequence that really is going to happen is whether or not those rangers uh, can accomplish anything. Um, but everyone else just goes back into their associated targets just in case there's another turn. You never know. We haven't really looked it up that much yet. Uh, and see, there's a tank chugging on behind, and the uh, shield breakers with not much to do. So this was pretty clutch. Um, this is one reason I really like giving the stone priest the bane chant upgrade. Um, he was able to get a Bane Chant off on these Rangers, which is huge um, because they don't have piercing normally. So we go into the only thing that matters is shooting. And I get a few points of damage on the Carnosaur, which is pretty good. And then I route him. Oh, man, that was close. Um, perfect. If I, if I had the uh, the headshot wave, sound wave, I would insert it here, but... Um, those rangers, those rangers went to town and and just just did what they needed to do. Um, the uh, greater earth elemental drops the uh, druid, big deal. Um, so yes, my opponent should have had another turn, um, but we mathed it all out and it didn't matter. Um, we even checked if there was a turn seven, it didn't matter. I was not going to be able to get to that token that he dropped, and he wasn't going to be able to take my token. So. We just ended it there. Um, it was a tie. Uh, one token each and one token unclaimed. Um, really came down to almost a single dice roll. I mean, I had to roll a, like a six or something like that. Or a five. You know, it's not impossible on two dice, but it's what it came down to. So it was it was pretty good. Um, some thoughts. I'm really... I like these rangers a lot. I think, I think I needed to learn not to just sacrifice them, like chaff. I mean, yeah, they're kind of chaff, but they're 135 point chaff, which is kind of expensive chaff. Um, they're really good for flanking. I mean, hitting on fours, piercing ones, totally decent for little troop of guys. Um, like I said, I got lucky at the end. I'm not sure if I would agree anymore that that should have been a loss, but it was definitely a, a pretty close call. He, he nearly got away with that. Um, on the comment of 1,500 points, 
Uh, we're playing 1,500 points because there's a tournament coming up not that far from here for Kings of War next month that's doing a 1,500 point cap. So uh, we're playing 1,500 points, and I feel it's... I mean, yeah, I play an elite army, so it feels like with doors, so it feels a little sparse on the table. Um, I think a 4x4 would probably be better, but eh. Uh, the next one would be trying not to waste my bowl workers, just for a note to myself. So, um, thanks for watching, guys. Um, if I forgot anything, this was the second time I recorded this because I realized I left my opponent's picture in it. And I didn't ask him if I could put his face in it, so I took that out. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll catch you next time.